Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living FTK boo-boo stain. Off of that subscribe button, swing climb even further beyond the 1K ladder. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm feeling it today. We got 1,071 subscribers. We are climbing even further beyond. We finna reach Super Saiyan 3 by the end of this month with 1,100 subscribers. So, I have a bit of a treat for you. This came in third place. I think it was out of Spain or something like that. And it's a Valiance F. TK, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I'm going to tell you right out of the gate. I read these cards. I don't know Valiance. All I know is that you use Cyberstein with Telekinetic Charging Cell, Reprodocus, and you make Burning Bombardment Bird. Like, that's the fucking FTK. Is this good? I really don't know. And we're going to get into that later on in the video. But, <laughs> like, no one's playing Nibiru right now, and you're playing Cross Out Designator. So I already have my concerns with this deck. And also, I don't know what the fuck Valiants do. I read these cards. The only thing I really got out of it was that all of the Valiants are extenders where you can summon them to the same column as the Pendulum Zone and then, like, make plays from there. So, basically, the way that I understand it is, like, you use Small World to connect to, like, whatever Valiant you need or to connect to Cyberstein. And then, like, you make Reprodocus somehow, have it point to Cyberstein, somehow get to the Charging Cell, which... Uh, outside of drawing two off talents, you don't have a way to get to this, if I'm being honest, from what I can tell at least. Um, and you change the Stein to a Psychic off the Reprodocus, activate the Charging Cell, and then just use Stein over and over again for no cost. Um, yeah, so that's a thing, I guess. So let's go ahead and dive on in the deck here. So we have one copy of Magic Calibra. So it's, it's a Pendulum monster that says target two monsters, uh, declare a level from one to six. One monster gets an increase of the number you declare, the other one gets a decrease. So if you call level one, you target two monsters. One gains a level, the other one loses a level. It's a uh, scale of a five, and it's a level four tuner, so that, that seems pretty good. Uh, one Nibiru, because this deck loses to Nibiru. We're playing through Cross Out for a reason. Uh, one Gizmek. This card actually seems pretty good. Uh, one Valiant's Dominator Duke. I'm not going to go through all these effects. Uh, all you need to know is that they're all extenders, and they have different monster effects. Um, but their pendulum effects are pretty much the same. Like, they can be special summoned from the pendulum zone if you meet certain conditions. Um, and then you can't special summon other monsters that aren't Valiants except from the extra deck. Um, then we're playing one uh, Nazuki Valiant Ninja. We're playing three of the Mad Marquise. Then we're playing one uh, Kaiden Kendo Spirit. From what I can tell, this just seems to be a scale nine extender. Two Skullmeister. Um... Skullmeister is interesting. You know, you don't see Skullmeister in a lot of decks, I guess because of the fact that it's a cross-out target, and it's also, I guess, a dark to get to Stein off the small world. And also, whenever a card or effect's activating your opponent's grave, you can just send it from hand to grave to negate. So it's good against tier. Uh, we're playing one Voltage Viscount. We're also playing uh, one Valiance Archer, one Ash, because cross-out's a thing, uh, two Buster Baron, one Stein, because we want to FTK. And then we're playing three Shinome Valiant Prince, uh, Priestess, and then one Droll, because <laughs> cross-out's a fucking thing. Uh, for the spells, we're playing one Valiant Wars, place of beginning, uh, one Talents, three Solo Activation, three Small World for the Connections, uh, one Call By, three Cross Out, because I guess this deck auto loses to Hand Traps, uh, one Senate Switch. So once per turn, you target a monster in your main monster zone, choose one of its unused adjacent, which is horizontal monster zones, move that target to the chosen adjacent zones. Uh, most of these monsters gain effects whenever they're moved to a different zone. So, And then you can also search the Senate Switch off of the uh, place of beginning. You just pop a Pendulum monster card you control, so go to the extra deck face up, and then you add the Senate Switch from deck to hand. Three Charging Cell, because we want to FTK. Uh, one Shinra Bancho, one Koenig Weissen. These are both field spells. These cards seem pretty disgusting. And one Imperm, because, again, we lose if we don't have Cross Out. Uh, for the side deck, we're playing two Lava Golem, one Shifter, one Viscount, one Ghost Ogre, one Droll, one Zeus, one Baguska, one Broil Sword, one IP, one Lightning Storm, three Dark Ruler, and a Twin Twister. Um, I'm assuming that he's playing the Dark Ruler, because probably after game one, or whichever game that he gets the FTK off, he side decks out the FTK and just plays, like, I guess, going second Valiance in order to OTK. Uh, for the extra deck, one Reprodocus, two Beyond the Pendulum, one Phoenix, one Soldier of Chaos, one Apollosa, which, I mean, if you can't get it out by summon number five, I think it's kind of pointless, but okay. One Access Code, one Gear Gigant, one Power Tool, because there's a shit ton of equip spells. Oh, I'm an idiot. That's how you get to the Charging Cell, by searching. You just make the uh, the Power Tool Dragon if you don't open with it, I guess. Um, one Sea Monster of Theseus. I'm going to be honest, I have no clue why he's not playing Instant Fusion. <laughs> Three Bombardment Bird, because we want to FTK. Uh, one Genesis Grand Duke, and then one Naturia Exterior, because you can summon it off of fucking Stein. <laughs> so, 
somehow, some way, it may not have been Spain. I really don't know where. But this came in third place at a regional. Now, I don't know how many people were at this regional. I don't know if, like, it was a bunch of Johnny No Thumbs that started playing the game five minutes ago. But I would love to interview the player that played this deck and understand their mindset. Because nobody is playing Nibiru right now. And, like, this person must not have played against Sprite at all. Because in case you haven't been keeping up with the competitive metagame, I mean, I know we're in a Tier 0 Toxic format, which is honestly, I think, how this deck was able to do so well. Because uh, Sprite is now playing, like, 18 hand traps minimum. So, <laughs> cross out is a once per turn, you're not beating Sprite. Like, it, th there's, there's no way, my guy, that you are beating Sprite. The thing is, is that no one's playing Nibiru, obviously, because, you know, Tier Element can make Rukalos by, like, summon number three or four. So, it's pointless to Nibiru them. And even if you do, like, any Tier Elements that are on the field that haven't used their effects, they're just going to use the effects to fuse or bring back the monsters. Or if you Nibiru the Kit Kalos, and they're just like, okay, thank you, I'm going to mill five more. So, no one's playing Nibiru. But the fact that he's playing cross out with Nibiru already tells me that this deck loses to Nibiru. So it's like, did you just not play against any sprite for nine rounds at this fucking regional? And like you just played against tier or you played against decks that were specific that they specifically designed themselves to beat tier because there's no way that you're beating a deck that is playing a shit ton of hand traps. There's just no way. So the, the player that played this deck, if you're watching this, like I'm not trying to bust your balls, pimp. It just, for one thing, it amazes me that this individual came in third place with fucking Valiance playing an FTK Bombardment Bird deck with Cyberstein and Charging Cell, which just seems inconsistent as hell on paper. So either this person lost a bet or they just meta called the shit out of this regional and they're just like, nah, we're going in guns blazing with Triple Cross out and the one of Nibiru and if we open the Nibiru, we lose. Like holy balls and i could be wrong maybe there's like a combo here where like you can shuffle back then a beer i don't know i read these cards effects i don't know what valiants do valiants aren't a good deck like i'm not trying to be a dick i'm just being honest like i'm but but don't get me wrong like i am absolutely impressed that this ftk came in third place um the thing that here here's the thing let, let me kind of explain this better because i've been experiencing this with cash tira post photon hypernova i've been playing like triple nibiru and triple cross out and cash tira but that is so inherently bad because that is so inconsistent. Now, you may be saying, oh, well, Avery just played, you know, more cross-out targets. But that in of itself is still a handicap because you're making your deck more inconsistent. So if your deck has to rely on cross-out because it can't summon Appalosa by summon four or five, then your deck already out of the gate has issues. I'm not saying that you can't do well. It's just like your chances of doing well decrease and your consistency as a whole decreases because like... This person to come in third place must have been damn lucky to not open up the one of Nibiru when their opponent's playing Nibiru. Or he just got lucky and played against, I don't know, Tier Element all day. Because no one is playing Nibiru against Tier because Nibiru is just bad. It's not going to go off because Rukalis is just going to negate it. So, you know, a lot of these FTK decks and decks that are kind of off the wall can do well because of that. You know what I mean? It's kind of like if you... You know, back when I got my invite with the 60-card branded Elvish, I know I always bring it up, but it, it it still rings true. It was a 60-card deck that had just topped, like, some sort of European nationals or something, like, two weeks before. So I walk in, just letting my nuts hang, and, like, no one's prepared for it because the whole room was prepared for Sword Soul and branded. Like, that was it. Oh, and Drytron. So, like, the whole room was ready for that. And as long as I played against meta, I won because no one knew what my cards did. Like, no one knew what my deck build was. So, th that's kind of the same thing here. The problem is, is that it's Valiants, and Valiants are bad. <laughs> like, it, it just, you have to run it as, like, a sub-engine. Or you have to run it in something like this and hope that, like... Just the luck gets in your favor. Now, should you take this to a regional YCS? Well, fuck no. You're, you're going to get scrubbed on out the floor. They're going to kick you on out the convention center because you scrub out so bad. Like, uh, for, for, for one reason, number one, you don't want to be that guy that's playing the FTK at, a, at like, a regional. I mean, unless you want to be this person, like, you do you, boo-boo. But, like, God, playing cross out, even with these multiple targets, just feels bad, man. Like, I get that you can small world connection into the Stein and stuff, but, like, with my luck, I'm going to open up all the cross-out targets in my opening hand and just lose because I opted to go first and I have to pass play back to my opponent. They're going to OTK me because I opened all my cross-out targets. Like, it's just it just feels bad. Um, and on top of that, too, like, if you want to play this at locals, cool. 
but like I don't see it doing any better than a locals because it's just it's an F for one thing it's an FTK that revolves around charging cell and Stein like you're better off playing something like telephone FTK because at least once you get like basically two telephones established you pretty much just win the ball game so I don't know maybe I'm wrong maybe there's a combo with valiance like I said I don't know valiance I'm totally ignorant I'm not gonna lie I'm not even gonna bullshit you. Like, there might be something here where you can make the Apollos if I summon four or five and you don't even have to worry about Nibiru. But if you can do that consistently, then there's no reason for you to be playing Cross Out outside of if you're scared of Droll or Ash, which outside of, I think, what, Sprite? It, no deck is playing Droll or Ash. Maybe Flunder, but even then, I haven't really seen Flunder play a lot of that. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is your Bombardment Bird the Valiant Stein deck FTK. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Is there something I'm missing? Like I said, I don't know what these cards do. I, it's like reading a book, trying to understand what these cards do. I'm, I'm going to just understand what the meta decks are. And if I run into this, well, then so be it. That's Yu-Gi-Oh. I mean, I would think if you're, like, undefeated by round seven, you're not going to run into something like this. But, hey, I could be wrong. This deck came in third place. Congrats to the person that came in third place. If you happen to see this video, I'm just giving you a hard time, Pim. Don't don't take it personally. I just I don't understand how you came in third place playing three crossouts with basically one of targets. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video.